Okay, removing leading from my Springfield trapdoor rifle. Okay, this here is a problem. Uh, these are common guns, a lot of people are interested in them, a lot of people like to shoot them. And there's a problem with it. They get leaded up bad. I've seen some come to me real bad. Okay, alright, so let's start. What causes lead? Okay, um, these rifles were designed with a specific groove diameter and everything else to be fired with a bullet, a soft lead bullet, which is either 120 lead, and what that means is for every 20 pounds of lead, you add one pound of tin as a hardener, or 130 lead, which is 30 pounds of lead, one tin. I think 120 is what a lot of people recommend in a 4570. Um, but more on that in case. If you shoot any other lead alloy in these guns, which anything hard, wheel weights, a lot of people I see casting wheel weights and stuff, that alloy has something called antimony. Antimony is a hardener. It is a lead-like substance. It makes the bullets cast nice. It makes them a little bit harder to lead. The problem is, in these old guns, with the steel they have, antimony leading, okay, once you get that antimony leading in there, it's, it's bad. It's not malleable, it's a hardener, and it's, it's a pain to get out. So what causes lead? Okay, with cast bullets in any gun, alright, rule of thumb is, you slug the board diameter, say, uh, 308 for a 30 caliber rifle. You want a cast bullet, so you get a hard cast bullet that has to be one to two thousandths bigger than the groove diameter. So a three, uh, 309 or a 310 bullet size to that, which usually the raw cast bullets aren't uniform and you size them, so you have to be dropping a bigger bullet to size a couple thousandths off to get a uniform size a 309, 310, and then you got the right size hard cast bullet to fire with a smokeless round. Same thing with the trap doors. A lot of people like to fire smokeless, they don't like fooling around with black powder, and you get lead. You'd have to have the groove diameter on 4570 is about 460, 461. So you would have to have a cast bullet sized to about 462, 463 in a hard cast bullet. You know, you have to know what your groove diameter is so you will not get leading with a hard cast bullet. Now you're starting to throw the cartridge out of spec and everything. With black powder, generally you want a bullet that is about 2,000 smaller than a groove diameter. So the 461 with the Springfield trapdoor, we sized the bullet to 459. Okay? Soft lead. And you use black powder, not smokeless. The black powder, when loaded properly with the right charge, will hit the back of that bullet, expand it out to where it engages the rifling, and goes through the gun. With the proper lubricant in its style of bullet, Letting is very minimalized or, or non existent, so they say. Uh, and what causes the letting is when you have an undersized hard bullet, whenever you fire anything, black powder or smokeless, the blast from the powder charge goes between the groove diameter and the bullet itself like a blowtorch and it softens the lead to where it'll smear and it like welds it onto the inside of the barrel. That's what's causing the leading. Okay, it's a very complex thing. So we got leading now. Okay, you got the rifle, you inherited the rifle, this particular rifle here. How do I know if I have leading? How do I know, you know, first you gotta make your determination of if there's a, because it's hard to see, it's hard to look up these trapdoor barrels, it's hard to know what's going on. Okay, so now that we know what causes the letting, we try to avoid that in the future. How do we know if we have letting? Okay. 
you got to slug your board. Take a soft, either round ball, or I use lead sinkers, and you tap them down the barrel, and with you put a little gun grease on there, tap them down the barrel with a wooden dowel rod, or a brass rod, or aluminum rod, and you tap it down, and then you measure the groove diameter. On the Springfield trapdoors, you should be getting 460, 461 on average for the 45.70. You should be getting 515 with the 50.70 because that's 50 cal, 0 0.500 thousandths is the bore diameter with seven and a half thousandths deep grooves. So you multiply it by two. It's 15 thousandths. <coughs> when you tap, so okay, so now we understand we're slugging the bar, we know what to look for. Another thing is, when you slug the bar, when you tap the lead slug down, like on this one here, it was real difficult to get it past the muzzle. But once it got past the muzzle, it like drops in free fall halfway down the barrel, and then up in front of the chamber, it gets tight again. Okay, and my slug come out of 510, which tells me that somebody was shooting 510 diameter hard cast bullets in here and leaded the damn barrel of 5,000. And it's a three groove rifle, and I've heard of people slugging the bore, and the slug comes out with only two grooves on it. Okay, they, they actually clog one whole groove. And it won't be the whole length of the bore, it'll be in spots, so you'll have these weird tight spots. And when you're pushing the slug through, you can feel these. If you're feeling these strange spots where it's real tight, then it like drops. Basically, you got lead. You can't really tell by looking, because people try scrubbing it out, and it gets shiny. The bores are like mirror shiny. I had one 4570 that looked like a smooth bore with no pits until I took the leading out found the mild pitting and stuff in it. Alright, so that's kind of how you tell you have leading. It's critical. And these guns were made to a certain specification. They weren't made in wartime. So you're not going to get a wild variance in the groove diameter unless it's lead or something's wrong. Okay, it's like if you take all the tolerances together on a 4570, the minimum it should be is uh, 457. Okay, and I don't think you're really going to find a lot of them that tight. If you find uh, your groove diameter is larger, which I've heard of that, what that usually is, is the bore was rusted, somebody cleaned the bore out, and it kind of grew a little. Because once you scrape all the rust out, you've probably taken a thousandths off and lost the rust. So you will find some that are larger, and I think that's just from rust over time. These guns were made to exact specifications. It was not a wartime production. They should not have a very wide variance. And this is original guns. Reproduction guns and modern made guns will have different twist rates and groove diameters. Okay, we're talking about original antique trapdoor rifles. Alright, so now we know how to establish if you have leading. You should take the lead slug, check the groove diameter. When you're slugging the barrel, if there's weird resistance and like tight spots and areas of free fall, there usually is rust, leading. You know, you could have defects, rust, and wear. These guns are 120, 140 years old, so you can have other problems. But chances are, if it's real shiny and smooth and that, it's leading. Okay, now we're going to talk about removing the leading. This is where we know what causes it, kind of know how to find it. Now trying to get it out, and that's a difficult thing in itself. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some slug examples close up and give you an idea of what to look for when you slug the barrel. Okay, here's a couple slugs from some 4570s. This one here, if you notice, just a rough surface. You can't even tell if there's any grooves. This barrel was A, pitted and rusted and let it up. Somebody tried shooting it and just kept shooting it. And this slug comes out.